Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint Sunrise at a Hot Air Balloon Festival. Now here in my town we're getting ready to have our very own Hot Air Balloon Festival so I was kind of in the mood to paint some hot air balloons for you guys. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and then check out the video description below for a full list of materials for today's painting. Now let's get started. Today I am starting with a brand new Frederick's Red Label 12 by 16 inch canvas and I have not added any additional gesso to this so this is straight out of the package. And what I'm going to do to start is take my chalk pencil and I'm using blue today so that you can see this and so it doesn't really affect the color of my paint. And I'm just going to sketch out basically where I want everything in my painting to sit. Now I know that I want the focus of my painting to be the sky. So therefore the sky is going to be the largest section of my painting. So I'm going to put my horizon pretty low. I'm going to start just drawing a line right here. This is going to be where my water meets my mountains. So relatively horizontal. I'm going to take that all the way across. And then we can put some little mountains in here. Now I want to keep in mind where I want my sun. because I'm going to have a little bit of a sunrise. I think I'm going to have that be right about there. That's roughly on a one third mark. So that'll be an interesting place to have the sun. So from there, I'm just going to loosely kind of sketch in some kind of low mountains. And of course, as I paint my sky, I'm going to end up painting over this line. So my mountains will change. So I don't need to worry about drawing, you know, real precise mountains because it'll be totally different by the time I get to paint them in anyway. I'm going to bring these mountains kind of around rather than just having distant mountains and then the foreground. I'm going to bring these mountains so they kind of come around and I'm going to do that by just bringing that horizon from there around like that. And then we've got our closer rocks where our tree is going to sit. And again, just loosely sketch that in because I'll probably end up painting over all of that anyway. This will be a mountain right there. Now we can get started painting in our sky and to do so I'm going to use my one inch flat brush and as you can tell I treated myself to a brand new one inch flat brush. My other one was getting kind of scary. I'm going to dip it in the water and then wipe off a good amount on the edge. So here I have cobalt blue and titanium white. My cobalt blue is heavy body. My titanium white is basics and it really doesn't matter. You can use basics or heavy body here. So I'm going to load up with cobalt. So I pull some out and kind of squish my brush in it to really pick that paint up. Good amount. For this first section, I'm only going to use blue. I'm not going to pick up any white. I'm going to come over here into the corner and just with about half pressure, see that? Just kind of start laying it down and smoothing it around. I forgot how smooth these brushes are. My old one was getting so rough and it was getting really fat with old paint clogged up in it because I don't wash my brushes as well as I preach to you to do. Just soften your pressure, see that? And that gets rid of brush stroke marks. And I'm going to carry that same solid blue color over to this side just a bit. I do want it darker up in this corner than in this corner. Let's do a little bit more of just cobalt. Right here. Don't worry about going over the edge of your mountains. It's perfectly okay. See those brush strokes? Light pressure to smooth that out. Okay, I just dip my brush into a little bit of extra water, load up with some more blue. And now I'm going to grab just a little point of white across the tip of the brush. Lay that down right below where I left off. And then softly take it up into that previous color. There's not a lot of difference there, so maybe let's just pick up a little bit more white. Lay it in there. I do want it to be a pretty gradual change. 
since I'm going for a bit of a sunrise look, a, a pretty early morning look, I want to keep the brightest color right at the horizon. Just a little bit of blue that time, a little bit more white, right below, back and forth right up into it. I like using these kind of long, broad strokes like that because it almost helps insinuate a bit of movement and maybe clouds in the sky. Just a tiny poke of blue that time and a good amount of white. Let's really start filling this area in, but make sure you keep it blended. So don't be afraid to go up into that previous color. See how high up I took that light pressure. And right down here is where it's going to be my brightest. I'm just going to wipe off some of that and just pick up white. Lay that in there, lightly back and forth. There we go. Let's start filling in our water too, since we're going to use the same colors and it's going to kind of mirror that. So right here, I can still see my line. So I'm going to use my brush on the chisel edge. Mostly I just picked up white, but notice my color's a little darker here. Keep in mind that reflections, light colors are going to be a little darker in a reflection, while darker colors are going to be a little bit lighter in a reflection. Everything's just kind of neutralized a little bit. Let's grab a bit of blue. Still just using the edge of my brush. Back and forth. Don't be afraid to take it up into that previous color. Look at what a smooth blend we get. More blue. Get all the way to the edge over here. I just might as well take it all the way to the bottom. I'm going to paint over that bottom section with black anyway, so that doesn't matter. And then we want to take care of that spot. So this color is a little bit darker because notice the sky above is a little bit darker. Just lightly streak it over there. I feel like I do want to go just a hint lighter there. So just a little poke of white. Right there, very light pressure, back and forth, all the way down. If you use too much paint here, it's gonna get too bright, and then you're gonna have a hard time streaking it out on the sides, and you'll probably end up painting everything white. So when I say just a little poke of white, I mean really just like that, just touch the white paint. And if you pick up too much like I did there, just tap it off. That's how much I picked up. Now I want to let the sky and the water dry before I do anything else. And it's getting there, but I think I'm going to give it about 10, 15 more minutes. Okay, so my canvas is dry and I don't know if you can see, but up in this upper area, I've got a little bit of some transparency in my cobalt blue. So you can see the texture of the canvas a little bit more. And that's just the nature of cobalt blue. Here where it's quite dark, the paint was just a little bit thicker. Now, if you've got that, I know some of you get really freaked out by things like that. You can put another layer of cobalt blue over it. I'm not terribly worried about it. Some of it will be covered with the next thing that I do, but also I am going to add clouds to my sky anyway. And I feel like these little spots that are a little bit more transparent will just kind of help add to the feel of clouds. So I'm not terribly worried about it. What I'm going to do now is kind of darken this corner. I want it to feel like this is very early morning and part of the sky is still very dark. So I've got my one inch that I've cleaned off. I'm going to load up with some cobalt, not quite as much because I'm not going to cover a large area. So see, it's pretty smooth on my brush. And here I have Payne's Gray. You could use black if you want, but black is going to be really intense. 
Payne's Gray is also quite blue already. So it's not gonna deaden the sky. It's just gonna give us, see, like a nice dark kind of midnight color. And I may end up using some matte medium here. Matte medium will help me blend a wet color over a dry color, but we'll see how it goes first. So I'm just gonna start up in this corner here, lay that paint down with those broad brush strokes like we did last week. I'm more concerned about covering the canvas right now. Smooth it out with very light brush pressure. Let's lay down just a little bit more, bring that color down a little bit farther. Break up any hard lines that I have in the color there. I think I wanna bring it down just a little bit further still and then I'll start blending it. Now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of my cobalt and lay that down just below, work up into that darker color. Right below, work up into it. I think I am gonna take just a hint of that darker color right here, very subtly. There we go. And I know that we have a little bit of kind of a, a modeled effect in our darker color here. And again, that doesn't bother me because it might feel like there's some clouds or something up there. All right, I'm gonna go to my half inch flat brush and we're gonna add the bright area in our sky, kind of the yellowy sun that's coming up. So I'm gonna wet my half inch in my jar, wipe it on the edge. And now I've got some cad yellow light and you can use actually whatever color of yellow you like. I just like kind of the pale subtleness of the cad yellow light for this. I'm gonna grab just a tiny point of it. This color is very strong. So do you see how much I grabbed? Just a tiny bit right on that corner. Let's grab some white. I'm gonna come over here and mix them in. See how little of that yellow I grabbed, but how yellow it made that paint. So I'm gonna load up with that. And wherever I feel like that brightness begins, I'm just gonna lightly start dusting it up. Since this color that I'm painting on top of is dry, I don't have to worry about it blending and creating green. I'm just gonna lightly dust it over top of this. Just take it up until the color completely fades out. If you use too much paint, again, you're gonna take this yellow up way too high and you're really just gonna cover everything in here and turn it completely yellow. Let's do one more, about the same, little spot of yellow, we'll poke a white. I might add just a tiny bit more yellow and keep this concentrated toward the bottom. Right down here, there we go. Super light pressure, see how my brush is? It's not even bending just the tip of the brush. Dust, dust, dust. Take the brush on the edge here and there and let that color come up a little. Dust it out with the tip of the brush. It almost looks like little reflections of this light on the bottom of clouds. There's a little bit over here maybe. Don't worry if you get too much, you can always cover it up or just put a white cloud over it later. One more little poke of yellow and we'll create kind of the, the little sun it doesn't necessarily have to be the sun. Dust it out. You don't have to make a hard circle. In fact, I would recommend you don't make a hard circle here. Just a nice bright point. I'm even going to take just a little point of white just to really make that nice and bright. I think that's good for now. 
Now I will come back and add the reflection to the water, but I want to wait until after I do the reflection of the mountains. Okay, I'm going to go to my number six cloud brush and we're going to make some very simple clouds in here. Now when I say very simple clouds, I mean it. I mean very simple. And let's do a little bit of cloud 101 before we begin. All right, so cloud 101, we have a practice canvas here. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to show you what a worm is. Because I see lots of worms and I hear people always complain that all they make is worms. So here's how you make a worm. You get too much paint. You come in here with the tip of your brush and you're afraid to bend it. And you go like this and you make this perfect shape with no variation and you don't know what to do from there so you stop and then you come back and you get more paint and you do the same thing that's how we make worms so if you make worms this is how we stop making worms first of all we get most of that paint off of our brush there's no reason for that much paint and wipe that on my paper towel what we do instead is we come into our paint and we pick up a tiny point. You see that? It's a tiny point of paint. If you pick up too much, you tap it off on your paper, on your paper plate. Now, we're gonna take that little point of paint and we're gonna do half foot pressure. So remember, if your brush is your foot, this is standing on your tippy toe, right? You'd stand right up on your tippy toe Half foot pressure would be you're standing flat footed, but your heel is rocked up a little bit. So you're standing on the front half of your foot. Flat foot pressure is your full foot on the ground. So we're going to use half foot pressure. So my brush is bent halfway. See that? And I'm going to nudge it. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring it back down. Maybe I'll bring it over here, back in, all kinds of different directions. Sometimes you do end up with a little worm spot that you don't want. If that happens, grab the tiniest bit of the sky color. See that? Just the tiniest. I just tapped into this paint that's almost dry. And same thing, half foot pressure. Nudge that darker color up into it. Sometimes it'll take a couple of times, a couple of tries. Come back in, again, a tiny point of paint, and let's do another cloud. Bring it down in all kinds of shapes and directions. See that, see how scattered that is? If there's a spot that's a little too thin, you want it a little thicker, just grab a tiny bit more paint. You can pull it into that previous cloud. See, a nice, effective, misty cloud that is not a worm. You can always come back and add more paint. Always, always. But if you get too much, it's so hard to take away. See how I just brightened that cloud up just a little bit more? But what are we going to do from here? Not a lot. You know, I can try and break that up. But really, you know, once it's there, it's, it's kind of there. See how I can break that up a little bit and kind of scatter it out that way. But I would rather have you have super misty clouds like this that you almost can't see and have to go back and add a little bit more than to start with this and be stuck. Okay, so let's put that into effect. Still using my same brush and I am using it dry. I feel like if the brush is wet, it smears the paint too much. So I like to use it dry, but experiment and see. Maybe you'll like to use it wet better tiny point of white and let's start adding some clouds right down here. If this is quite wet you might want to let it dry a bit. Mine's pretty dry. All right half foot pressure and notice how quickly I'm doing it and it's not because I'm super practiced at it even though I am but it's because if I sit and I focus on every little brush movement then I'm probably more likely to end up with worms or at least just clouds that look stiff and a little bit more unnatural. Let's see how I'm really going for these little misty shapes. Pop a little highlight here and there sometimes. Keep 
keep them going in different directions. You know, don't make lines. If you feel like you start to notice you have a line, a line, a line like that, then once in a while, it's like right here, I kind of feel like it almost looks like we're starting to develop lines there. Then at any point, you can kind of come from this cloud here, start there, and bring it down so that it meets up with that cloud. Then you've gotten rid of the line. Some of these clouds are quite bright in color, and some of them are very, very pale. Just like clouds in the sky for reals, you'll see clouds that, you know, are just very soft and puffy, and other clouds that are very solid and very bright. Make sure that you stand back every few minutes to really take it in, to see what it looks like. It can be really hard to tell how the clouds actually look and how they're, you know, interacting with each other as well as the other elements if you're just, you know, focused right there in front of it. So right here, as we start getting into the darker sky, and I'm starting to get little bits that I don't really care for, like that was too hard, kind of got that worm going. So I'm gonna come into my blue that's almost dry. I'm just lightly tapping. See, I picked up almost none. Very light pressure. I'm just gonna scoot over the bottom edge of that cloud. And that smoothed it out. Kind of got rid of that little bit of ugliness that I didn't like. Same thing there. It's a good way to add shadows as well. I don't really need any shadows in these clouds because they're gonna be directly lit from the sun coming up here. See, I'm not really making cloud shapes necessarily. I'm just kind of skittering the paint around, making sure that it moves in interesting ways. Very, very thin. Pinpoint, just a pinpoint of white. Another little spot that kind of got away from me. A little bit of blue. Just kind of zoom me out there a little bit while I finish this up. I'm not really gonna take any clouds up into this darker area. Mostly I wanna keep them in this brighter area where I can say that the, the rising sun is kind of reflecting on them. I'm just kind of make corrections with my darker blue color as I need to. be almost done. In fact, what I'm going to do, because this is a quite dark area, but I want to take a few clouds into there as well as up in here. So I'm going to come into my blue. Notice I just picked up a tiny little bit, a little bit less than I would have picked up white to do a cloud. So very little. I'm going to come over here and tap that in and then kind of spin my brush in it so that I coat the end of my brush in a bit of blue, but it's very, very thin. See that? See how the tip of my brush is blue now? That way when I start kind of blending, I automatically get a little bit of blue in the bottom of the cloud. Okay, so now I can come in with my little poke of white, and my half foot pressure. See, and that kind of prevents the bottom of the cloud from being too pale on that dark blue area. And I can even go a little bit darker if I feel like I need to.
spot there where I feel like I have a line and another line. So I'm going to take this cloud right here, pull it over into this one. There we go. And from here, I really feel like I'm just going to kind of use the little bit of paint that's on my brush and just kind of hint at some clouds. No bright points on these ones. Just to say maybe the sun is just starting to reflect on them. You can barely see that they're even there. See that? Almost no colors coming off of my brush. But it's enough to just break up that darker color and suggest some clouds. Down here, let's get a little point of white. I'm gonna kind of wipe it right there. I'm gonna get the tiniest point of yellow that I absolutely can and wipe it there. And let's just put a little punch of this yellow on some of these clouds that are closest to our rising sun. But just suggest it. If you get too much, just take a little bit of white and put it over it again. So when I say the tiniest amount you possibly can, I mean like a quarter of a pinpoint. Almost no yellow. Remember this yellow is super, super strong. You don't wanna turn these clouds bright yellow. We're just putting a suggestion of yellow right down here on these lower ones. I think that's almost good. I think I'm almost done there. Okay, now we can get started on our distant mountains. Now remember that mountains in the distance are gonna be cooler and lighter than the mountains close to us. So I'm gonna stick with my half inch flat and I'm gonna get some cobalt and I'm gonna mix it with some Payne's Gray. Keep it a little closer on the cobalt side but definitely darken it with some Payne's Gray and some white. We want a quite light grayed out color. I think I like that. Let's see how that looks. Well, that might be a little light. Let's darken it just a tiny bit. There, let's see how that works. All right, I basically remember about where my mountains were. Do that very loosely. Look, Mr. Moon's gonna be noisy today. I know a lot of you think that I got rid of Mr. Moon. I did not, he just, for some reason, he's quieter at home when I record than he was at the studio. Fill this in. Don't worry about any reflections in the water just yet. We'll take care of that in just a minute. Now the Payne's Gray is quite transparent, so that will probably look a little on the transparent side, and that's okay. Let's do that again on the other side. We'll bring this one in about like that. If you're getting a bunch of texture on your canvas like I did, just get a little extra water. There we go. See the shape of the mountain at the top, I'm really just kind of making it up as I go along. Don't put too much thought into it. Notice I'm kind of going and I'll twist my brush to the left or the right or just kind of all different directions. Okay, on this side, on the left, I think I'm gonna make my mountain a little bit darker because the sky is darker there. There's not as much light hitting it.
A little extra water. You don't have to worry about brush stroke directions here. Once we start doing the highlights and shadows on it, you can change any of that. So really just fill it in. Don't want weirdness on my water there though, that's better. I'm gonna throw a little extra white in there because I'm moving closer to the light source. little bit of that darker color right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take the color roughly about like that. It doesn't have to be exact, just pretty close. Just a little bit of extra water. And under our mountains, Back and forth, use the edge if you need to, because that helps kind of blend out some lines sometimes. And I am gonna get some matte medium because it's so much easier to get the appearance of blended paint when you're painting on top of dry paint when you use matte medium. See that? See how it almost looks like I just blended those two colors together, but really I just painted wet paint over dry paint so there we have a little reflection of our mountain. Let's do that on the other side too. Tiny bit of matte medium. I'm not picking up a ton. Right at the base of this mountain here. See that? On the edge to get rid of that line and create another one, that's all right. Notice I don't worry about right here. We're gonna have the reflection of our light there. But I also didn't try to avoid it. So what I'm telling you is just, you know, be, be loose with it. Let's darken this spot just a little bit. So I'm laying in some of that paint. Some, oh, not that much, some matte medium. Smooth it out. There we go. Okay, let's finish up our mountains. I'm gonna pull some more black. Paint's gray, I keep saying black because it looks like black. More cobalt, just a little bit of white. This little mountain here is gonna be closer to us than these mountains. So it's gonna be just a little bit darker. I'll just use a little matte medium since it's already on my plate. Maybe a little bit darker. Bring that down into here. If you're not sure what to do with the bottom of that hill, don't worry about it. Let's do some highlights. So I'm just gonna go right into my white Maybe a little bit of extra blue, because that was pretty gray. And some matte medium. I'm looking for a color that is lighter than those distant hills. And I'm gonna put some of this color facing my sunrise. That's still pretty gray. I don't want it to be quite that gray. There we go. See how I kind of pulled that around? Rather than just, a lot of times I'll see where rocks and mountains are just kind of highlighted on this top edge. That's not really very realistic, but if I take this lighter color down here and then maybe even pull it over here, that says that this is all a face of the mountain facing that way and everything else maybe faces up or back the other way. And you get to make that up, you get to say, what's facing the sunlight and what isn't. 
and you can experiment and say, oh, maybe there is, maybe there's a bright point right here. And if that doesn't look right, then when you do your shadow color later, put your shadow color over it. And right here, same thing. I'm going to pull that down. And across here. Now I know that our sunlight is yellow and I'm kind of making the highlights on these mountains gray, but we'll add some warmth into them. I just want to get the value on there right now. Just whatever you feel like is facing the mountain or facing the, the sun. Let's darken that a bit as we move back because the mountain itself is starting to get darker and we're getting farther away from our sunrise. See how I'm just kind of being random with that? But it's creating the shape of the mountains. Okay, let's do our shadow color before we do our yellow highlights. So really just looking for a color that's darker, but not, you know, I don't want to go terribly dark. So I'll put a little bit there and that kind of says that spot is facing away from us or facing away from the sun. Maybe pull the brush stroke in the opposite direction. And we don't have to paint over all of that first color. Some of it is going to be mid-tone. You know, you're going to have highlights, you're going to have shadows, you're going to have reflected light and mid-tone. So in some areas, I'm going to leave that first underpainted color because I feel like it would be there. We'll see in these areas that I feel like no light would be getting to the section. Let's go just a little darker right here. This isn't magic. I'm being random here, guys. Let's actually go ahead and finish this part before I clean my brush to do the next part. And I think this shadow color we did here is probably going to work for our highlight color on this rock. Oh, maybe just a little bit lighter. There we go. See, short little brush strokes kind of breaks it up, almost makes it look more like rock. If our brush strokes are very smooth, it might feel like, you know, sand or grass, but the short angular brush strokes help say that it's rock. I think that's good. Well, let's go just one, one brighter in a couple places. All right, I cleaned off my brush. I'm gonna get some white, and there is some of that blue-gray right there at the bottom of the white, and that's perfectly fine. Mostly just white. Tiny point of our yellow. Just a little bit. You just want it to be more yellow than it was. See, it's not actually a yellow color, but in contrast to the colors already on the mountain, that's gonna be quite yellow, quite warm. We can add just a teeny tiny bit more. Just wanna avoid it getting too yellow. Really, I'm just gonna put it on these areas that I feel like are the closest to the light source. So not everything I made this lighter color is gonna get it. Really, just kind of right here in the front. And 
Maybe as the yellow wears off my brush, I'll take hints of it through here. Just very faint hints. Let's get brave and put just a little tiny bit more yellow right here in the front. This part is right up against the sun, so it might have quite a bit of yellow. A little bit more white. This just feels too dark to me. I think that's better. Let's grab a bit more yellow, white, little point of matte medium and we'll start adding our reflection so the edge of my brush again right there at the base of the mountain very light pressure kind of sketch it back and forth and bring it out so this is actually going to be very similar to the way we did the water reflections on the street in urban rain I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on a paper towel. I'm not cleaning it. A little bit of matte medium. And I'm just gonna dust out some of those harder lines. Let's get just a tiny point of white, tiny, tiny point of white, a little bit of matte medium, and kind of sketch in some of that. I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes because I can sense that some of that paint is gonna start lifting if I go over it too much more. So we'll let that dry, we'll do our foreground. Okay, so I cleaned off my half inch and I got some Mars Black. And my Mars Black is basics, but it doesn't matter. You can use heavy body or soft body, whatever you prefer. So I'm just gonna load up with some of that and I'm gonna loosely sketch in my rocks here, just like we did the mountain. See, sometimes I twist my brush up, sometimes the other way. Just getting rid of that line and then fill it in. When I said getting rid of that line, what I meant was sometimes when you draw a line with a brush, you get that like ball of paint that can leave a bump once it's dry. So just kind of start up in your line and pull down and that will get rid of that bump of paint. Maybe I'll bring this side up just a little bit higher. This is where our tree is going to sit. A little extra water. feel like there's a disconnect. I want it to seem like this is all really one set of mountains. So I pulled some Payne's Gray, a little bit of Cobalt, just into that Mars Black that I was using. Tiny point of white and then a little bit of water. Let's just kind of continue that. Make it seem like that's connected to that mountain back there, that little rocky outcrop. And then it blends in here somehow. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing ever has to be perfect. Perfect doesn't even exist in art, honestly. A little bit of white, let's just add some highlight. And also that's gonna help kind of break up and make it hard to tell 
where one set of rocks starts and where another set ends. On that medium just to blur out that bottom. There we go. All right, now I've decided just right this minute that I'm gonna add a few stars up in this corner. Sometimes you can see a few stars when the early morning sun is just starting to come up. So I'm gonna take my half inch, wet it in my jar, and then just shake off the extra drip. I'm gonna grab a little corner of white, pull over here, and then mix the water. Oh, I don't want it quite that runny. Just mix the extra water in with that paint, maybe a little bit more paint. I'm not gonna get carried away with the stars here. I just wanna do a few. So I'm gonna hold it like this and then just rake my finger across the top. Taking care to keep them mostly up in the darker area. If I get stars down in the mountain, just take a lightly damp brush and just wipe over top of it. So you wanna make sure that everything else is dry before you do that. Just add a few more. I think that's good. I'm just gonna wipe off a couple of these that got on top of my clouds. Just with a clean, damp brush. Okay, now we're gonna add our tree. And to do so, I'm gonna use my number 10 round brush. I'm gonna wet it in my jar. Just kind of wipe a little bit of the water off. And I'm gonna use black. So I'm gonna pull some out, mix it into the water on my brush. Make sure to keep your brush rolled to a point. And then as I bring it up, see I rolled it to get a nice sharp point. Now I want kind of a wild, kind of a craggy old tree. I'm gonna start here and bring it up. About like that. A little bit more. So right there on the ground, what I did to get that really uneven look is as I pulled my brush this way, I also kind of pushed it with my thumb. So see how it's rolling a little bit? So I rolled it up and that kind of makes me lose control a little bit of the shape of the brush and it, it pushes a little bit of paint upwards as well. I'm gonna take another main branch from here, slowly push more as I bring it down roll it toward the back, get a really twisty look to my tree. And then I can just kind of shape these out. I'm really only gonna focus on two or three main branches and everything else will just be kind of for decoration. Let's widen this one. Maybe twist and get a little bit more of a gnarly Look at the base of the tree. Let's get, let's get another little branch over here, kind of coming up. See, you can keep making your tree wider and just changing the overall shape of it. Okay, now I'm gonna go to my number five round brush. We're just gonna do a few detail branches and then we'll put some foliage on our tree. So those of you who said that Mr. Moon sounded lonely when he was at my studio, I don't know if you can hear him out there yowling today. 
Trust me when I say he is absolutely not lonely here. I'm just gonna add a few kind of gnarly branches here and there. Just really to kind of define the shape of the tree, where the foliage is gonna go. I'm not overly worried about these branches being, you know, perfect or pretty or anything. I'm really just looking for the shape. I know I want kind of an asymmetrical looking tree. Let's pop another one right there. Notice how far back I'm holding my brush. I'm not getting in here like this, you know, and being real precise. None of that is necessary. If I get too precise with these branches, then I'll really just be wasting my time because you're not going to see a lot of it. And even what you are going to see, whether it's precise or not, you're not going to be able to tell. Okay, I think that's good for now. I'm going to go to my fan brush, wet it in the jar. And because of the natural bristles of the fan brush, it holds so much water that I just like to kind of touch it to a paper towel. I'm not wiping it, I'm not squeezing it, just touch it to the paper towel. And let's get some black. So I pull some out and then we squidge it. Remember, don't just try to load it like that because that's not the best way to load a fan brush. Kind of squidging it back and forth like that in the paint is really how you're gonna load the fan brush effectively. About like that. Now for my foliage, I know the fan brush is something that a lot of people struggle with and it's kind of intimidating. What I don't want you to do is go to your foliage and start doing that. Please don't do that. <laughs> That's not gonna look good. What I want you to do is come into the corner. See how I'm at the corner of my brush? And I'm just gonna kinda crush the corner of my brush. See that? If my shape gets too repetitive or the paint runs out, I can just flip it over to the other side. Now let me show you a couple things. You might want to, if you're not really comfortable with the fan brush, test these out on a paper plate or on another canvas before you go to your actual canvas. If the brush mark you get with your fan brush is really gloppy looking like that, see how that's really kind of round and very solid? Your brush has too much water in it. So then just take a paper towel and just lightly touch where the bristles come out of the ferrule. Just kind of press that to the paper towel for a second flip it over and on the other side. See, I'm not wiping the bristles, it's just where the ferrule is. That sucks out quite a bit of the water. And now when I come in, it's a little bit more broken. Likewise, if you go to your canvas and you start hitting the brush and you're not getting a lot, and so everything starts looking really puffy, you either don't have enough paint or enough water. So just kind of experiment and see what works the best. It'll take you a little bit of time to get used to the fan brush and know exactly how much water to put on it. Okay, so I'm gonna come in with the corner, just roughly where my branches are, and just kind of start touching. See, very small marks. I'm not splatting the whole brush down. Just kind of like that, and just kind of bounce. Bounce the brush a bit. Kind of make individual shapes. So this is like an individual shape. And my brush is loaded weird from doing <laughs> examples. There we go. Let's do another little shape over here. Bring it up a bit. Flip my brush over because my paint was running out. This is another shape and bring it out. And then we can even say, I know I don't have little branch endings here, but I'm gonna say there's another one of these little shapes right in here. If you keep everything strictly to where your branches are, it's gonna look really stiff. So don't be afraid to break out. Still just using that corner. I'm just gonna thicken this up a little bit here.
So they're individual shapes. You know, we've got this kind of little bunch here and this one here and here and here, but they all overlap a little bit. Don't put individual little puff balls on your tree. I just mean to kind of focus on creating individual shapes so that your tree doesn't just have this big ball of shape at the top of it. Okay, let's add some highlights to our tree. So my number 10 is cleaned off, but I'm gonna load it up with some black again. Not a ton of black, I'm just getting some black into the bristles. Now I have some raw sienna, and I'm gonna use that to create the highlight colors of my tree. So I just pulled out a little blob of it. I'm gonna kind of start right here where I feel like the light would be hitting the tree. And kind of spin my brush, see how it's spinning just a little bit. Take it all the way to the edge there and down. Then we can come back and kind of break that up and move that color around if it kind of stuck to one spot. Let's get a little bit more. Pull one of those from here, back and forth. See how I rolled my brush one direction and then I rolled it the next. A little bit of black to kind of blend out areas that I don't want quite so much of that bright color. I do want this tree to seem a little bit twisted, even in the bark. And remember that our sun is over here, so we're not really gonna have highlights on this backside. pop a couple of these areas a bit brighter and then I might be done with the highlights on the the main part of the tree I don't we'll see I might come back later with a little bit of the the raw sienna mixed with white but we'll see I'll decide then I'm just going to take little hints of it just kind of poke it in here just in a few spots Go back to our number five, get some of that raw sienna. And I'm just gonna add just a few little detail branches. See how I'm just kind of drawing little lines. Nothing real specific. They don't really come from anywhere. They're not really going to anywhere. They're just suggesting that there are some other branches in here that are catching a bit more light. If you feel like you are missing a few supporting branches and you don't want them in that color, just grab some black and we can say maybe there's a little bit of a branch kind of coming up and holding that piece there, wherever you feel like you need them. I'm gonna take a little bit of that cad yellow and mix it in with some of my Payne's gray that I had left over. I'm gonna get a nice dark green. Cad yellow and Payne's gray makes such a pretty green. And on the underside, since our light is down, we don't wanna put the highlights at the top. I'm just gonna kinda tap in a few highlights. We can even grab just a little more yellow, give some nice bright pops right here in the front.
don't go overboard with it. And FYI, usually when I say, hey, don't go overboard with this, it's usually me telling myself, okay, don't go overboard with this. <laughs> right now, I feel like there's a very real possibility that I could go overboard with this. So I think I'm going to stop. I'm just going to take little points of almost just yellow right there in the front. And I think that's good. Okay, let's do just a few highlights on the rocks here in the foreground. I don't want to get carried away with it. Then I'm going to pop some of the brightness in the water and we can start on our hot air balloons. It's back to my half inch. Load up with just a little bit of black. Not a ton of black. Let's throw a little bit of this raw sienna in there. And a little bit of white. Maybe a little bit of Payne's gray. I'm just looking for kind of a neutrally gray color that isn't, you know, like black and white. I want something just a little bit more natural, rocky looking than that. And just kind of start pulling it in a few directions, just like I did with the mountains. Remembering that my light reflections are really gonna be wherever this light is hitting. So if it's coming this way, it's gonna hit anything facing it and it's gonna miss anything on the other side. Just kind of feeling out where some of those colors are gonna go. And I'm not worried if I put a highlight color in a spot that I ultimately don't want it. It's easy to get rid of. So let's go ahead and pick up some black just a little bit. And I'm gonna dust out just some of these lines there. Just where I don't want a hard transition between the brown highlight and the black. And then if I don't like one of the highlights, I can just paint it out. Let's throw a little bit more white in here. Get one slightly lighter for just a couple little highlight spots that really pop and then we're gonna move on from the rocks. I really feel like that's about all I wanna do on the rocks. I'm not interested in, you know, spending way too much time on these rocks. See how simple rocks can be? It's just like a directional brush stroke here. There, that's a rock face. I lied. One more lighter. I always do that to you, I know. Just here in the center. especially over here because this light to me feels like it's moving this way. So I might have a little bit more of that highlight over here than I do on this side. Oh, that was yucky. I don't like that. Wipe that off. Grab some black. Very lightly dust over it. Much better. All right, cleaned off my half inch, grab some white, a little bit of yellow, and just kind of sketch it. Don't take that up into the mountain. There we go. Just kind of sketch it back and forth there. Smear it with your finger or a little bit of matte medium. A little extra white. Everything's horizontal. Don't let your brush strokes start twisting to one side or the other. Keep them horizontal. A little more pure white right here in the back. I 
Okay, so let's go ahead and start drawing our hot air balloons and I'm gonna use my white chalk pencil. I'm gonna do several different sizes and placements, both higher and lower, and all of that combined is gonna help create some depth. So I wanna start with my largest, most in focus hot air balloons. So let's do a large one, maybe right here. Let's do our largest one right here. Start with a circle. And this chalk pencil will just wipe right off with a damp brush when I'm done, so I'm not worried about it on my canvas. It comes off so nicely. Then we're gonna kind of pull this down into a teardrop shape. And there's a lot of different shapes of hot air balloons. So don't feel like, you know, if your teardrop shape is longer than mine or if your hot air balloon is more rounded, that's not a big deal. We'll have a little basket and you can't really see that and just kind of drawing a rectangle to remind myself of where that's gonna go. Let's do another smaller one, maybe right here. And again with the, the little teardrop shape. I'm not gonna worry about drawing the basket. We can just add a few others. I'm gonna put, let's see, let's do like a quite a small one right here. We'll just insinuate that there's one right there. Let's start with these five. If I want to add some more, I will. So I'm going to use my number five round. Just get a little bit of black. Make sure that my brush is to a nice sharp point. And I'm going to start filling these in. So I'm going to start with my littlest one. This one is really, really far away. So I don't even have to worry about a basket on that one. I think just the little black point will kind of be enough to say that it's a basket or a balloon in the distance. I'm gonna fill all of them in with the black. All right, let's add the baskets just to the bottom of the largest two. Kind of gonna come right off the base here. And just pull that down a little bit. The basket is so tiny in relation to the balloon. So don't go overboard and create this gigantic basket. Let's see, we need five, we need an, an odd number. So I think I'm gonna do one more right here. Smaller, definitely, than the one it's next to, which is gonna push it into the distance. Tiny dot at the bottom just to imply there's a basket there. All right, to give our basket some color, you can get really crazy and, and do lots of colors if you want. I'm gonna kind of stick to individual colors for each balloon. And my background is this really pretty vibrant blue and the contrast to blue is orange. So I could either do orange or even go with like an orange red, like a cad red medium for my largest balloon because I want that to have the most contrast with the sky. So I think I'm actually gonna go with cad red medium because it's a very vibrant color. So I'm still using my number five and I have my cad red medium and I wanna keep in mind where my light source is. My light source is coming from down here, shining up like that. So the brightest part of my balloon is really gonna be right here kind of fading up this way and it'll be over here a bit. So I'm gonna get some of my red. Not a lot to start off with. 
kind of rolled a lot of it off. And I'm going to run this down the edge here in the brightest area. It's narrow down here at the bottom. And then as it comes around, it gets wider. And see how I kind of let it fade out on the inside. Reshape that just a little bit. I know you probably can't really see that because I'm using the paint very, very thin here. Again, quite wide here. So about as wide as my brush when I press it flat, releasing my pressure to let it get thinner at the bottom. And really, it, there's not really any of that color up here. The paint is still wet, so the red is kind of mixing with the black. Heavy pressure to get a nice wide line, narrow at the bottom. And fade out up here. Don't be frustrated if you can't see this, I promise. You'll be able to see it in a minute, but use that as a, as a clue to how thin you wanna apply this paint here. And like I said, because this black is still wet, the red is really blending in with it. See how I've got black smearing in there? And I'm bringing it down lower. just a little, just a hint of it over here. Okay, let's brighten it up. So see, I poked into the red, got a little bit heavier. I'm gonna go nice and bright, right down this edge, and let it kind of smear out, fade as it comes up. If you get a weird spot like that, where it's too heavy of a color, just pick up a little bit of the black, and you can smooth over it. Dunk into the red again, and we'll brighten this part up. Very narrow here. And let that fade out up here. Same thing over here, but see, every time I come farther to the right, the height of my fully saturated color comes down a bit. That helps say that the balloon is rounded. If I were to take this bright color all the way up, it would kind of press the balloon flat, and the balloon is not flat. and bright at the base here because that's what's taking the most light. Make sure you stand back and look at it. Not bad. I might have to let it dry and then come back and make sure that it's as bright as I want it to be. Let's let that dry. This is very early morning so you know there might not be a lot of light shining on these balloons if you're down on the ground looking at them. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that raw sienna and just kind of pop a bit of a highlight in the bottom of the basket. That's about it. I think on this balloon, I'm gonna use the Cad Orange. Again, it's just such a nice contrasting color to the blue of the sky. So one more time, I'm gonna load up with some of this orange and kind of roll off, get a thin amount. My light source is down here, so my color is gonna be on the opposite side on this balloon as it is on here, because the light is between them. So I'm gonna start up here, bring that down the edge, narrow at the bottom, a little bit wider at the top, and let it kind of start fading out. You can see this orange a little bit better than you could that red. Very narrow at the bottom, faded out at the top. 
If it's a little strong, just take a hint of black and run that over it. A little bit lower. side up just a little bit more no no I don't think I like that it kind of threw off the look made it look like a bag I don't want it to look like a bag smear out some of those lines with a little bit of black now I can come back with that little point of orange and really start to bump those up now guys every time I use cad orange I get a lot of questions about why my cat orange is so vibrant. And I think it's because a lot of you are probably using cat orange in basics. The cat orange in basics is a completely different color. It is nowhere near as bright and beautiful as the cat orange heavy body. So if you've had troubles with cat orange in the past, like in golden hour or I feel like there was another painting I used it in that people had a hard time with. You definitely want to upgrade your cadmiums to a heavy body. Absolutely. Such a huge difference. That's too high on that side, I feel like. I know a lot of people say to immediately upgrade your your black and your white to heavy body, but I don't really notice enough difference to justify the price in black and white, especially since I go through so much of it. But the cadmiums, I absolutely will not use them in anything but heavy body. Let's get a little dollop of that raw sienna. A little highlight on the basket there. On our little balloon here, I'm gonna get yellow because I already have it out on my palette. This one's gonna be pretty simple because it's so small. We're just gonna suggest some of this color. Just a couple points where it's a bit heavier. And we can smear some of it with a little bit of black. I'm going to take a tiny point of this vivid lime, or you can mix a green or use anything else you like. I'm going to put just a little bit on this balloon. We don't have to worry about a basket. This one's pretty far away. I'm just going to kind of smear it with my finger. I don't know, this little one is so far away and it's so tiny. I might just put a little point of yellow on it. And maybe we can just say that it's the, the sun reflecting on it. I don't think we need to do anything more to it than that. Get rid of our other one that we're not gonna use. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of punch a couple highlights on this main balloon with the Cad Red, Cad Red Medium. And then I think I'm done. I feel like I'm done. Very simple balloons. You could go ahead and do those ones that have like the rainbow stripes. Now I'm gonna sign it, but I know I'm gonna get asked and you could add reflections of the balloons in the water if you want. I kind of feel like you wouldn't really see them at this time of day since the sun is so low. But if you really want to add reflections of the balloons, go for it. I would just kind of do them similar to the way I reflected the, the mountains in the water. And there's your sunrise with hot air balloons. 
If you have a hot air balloon festival in your town, I hope that you take the opportunity to visit it this year. I know I'm gonna do my best to get to our festival, which happens in the next week or so. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and I'll post some photos if I'm able to make it there. We'll see, we'll see how busy I am. You can find me on Instagram by just searching Painting with Jane. Thank you again to our generous sponsor, Fredericks, who sent me this awesome canvas that I painted on for you today. And thank you as always for painting with me, everyone. I'll see you next time.